Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, today is a very special episode. We're welcoming back Dave Tier, who is the owner and sales coach over at Sales Coaches Corner. Dave, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Adam. Absolutely my pleasure. Oh, man, Dave. So we've been on this journey. So for a lot of the viewers that have been following for a long time, we had Dave on the show previously. We announced that he was going to be an author in one of our upcoming books. And guess what? That book is live now. And as promised, we brought Dave back on the show. And today we're going to get into um, some of his ideas in the book, A New Way to Do Sales. It was his content. And there's a lot. He's gonna, we're going to be unpacking some stuff today. So anybody that's curious about sales, an expert in sales, or just wants to increase their sales skills, we brought the right guy on the line for you today. So Dave, um, first off, I just have to say the book is done. The book is out. How do you feel? I feel good. Yeah. I knew that I would. <laughs> <laughs> I got to oh, tell you, here, here, here's my thing. My, I've talked to f- quite a few people that have written books, and most of these folks did not enjoy the experience. Like it was a long, drawn out, a, almost a chore. So I, 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 for a long time, was convinced it would never happen. So, so then we meet, and you put me in touch with uh, – Who's the fellow that did the ghostwriting? Jeff. Uh, Jeff is one phenomenal. Of the yep. Phenomenal mm-hmm. guy. 45 minutes. I tell you what, it was the easiest thing I've done in a long time. Started marketing these services and advertising, right? It was a piece of cake. Yeah. And I loved it. And I just I just read it again this morning. I'm like, how did that guy pull all of that stuff yeah. out of a 45-minute conversation? It yeah. was very, very well done, just efficient, quick, easy. So it's cool. Right, I never thought it'd be published. Yeah, who thinks about it, that? Right, it's fun. My too. mother should and, have been published. She's the English major, right? Not me. And working with you, and on what I like about just what we do and how we do it is, um, is that we get to spend a lot of our time just drawing out the content, like you said, whether it's writing or, of course, bringing you on for things like the podcast interview, the marketing side. So I like to think of it as you get to do a lot of the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and we'll and we'll get further into the book, but first, I'm going to circle back. We're going to start this episode the way that we start them all. We'll start this with our Mission Matters Minute. So Dave, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Dave, what mission matters to you? Well, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's okay. Don't imagine too many people are listening now that listened a couple of months ago. I hope so, but you never know. Here's, here's the cool part of this business. Here's why I got into this business. I love to sell. There's no question about that. And, and it really is. It's a selling business. right? Without clients, there's nobody to train and coach. Mm-hmm. So I've learned over the years that the successful people in this business have a passion for selling. So mm-hmm. that's a, to me, it's a foregone conclusion. Not to everybody. The coolest feeling is making that sale. Yeah. Do you want to know the second coolest feeling? What? That I didn't get. I never got this feeling when I was selling paint cleaning chemicals and solvents or promotional products in my early years, my early careers. Second coolest feeling is word in the world is getting a phone call mm-hmm. from a client that just used some of your material yeah. and moved to sale forward, okay. moved to sale forward, closed to sale, got some information that he never thought he would get. Yeah. Learned, asked the tough question that she never thought she would ask. And mm. in there, it's like, I never got that feeling before. It's a, very cool feeling. Really yeah. neat. That matters to me. I mean, that's a mission. I, I, my dad was a teacher. My parent, my mom's a teacher. Mm-hmm. They got to teach, right? I, I, I like to t- transfer knowledge. Mm-hmm. So that matters. But 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 also helping someone in their career, mm-hmm. it's a double whammy. Really cool. So Yeah, it really is. And the way I like to think of it is, you know, you've been, and people do this in many different fields, is, you know, they've been blessed. They've either got acquired through many years of work, or maybe they had some natural talent as well. Um, a skill set or some value that they added to the marketplace. And then as they matured in their career, they figure out ways that they want to be of more value to others. And a lot of times that can be teaching or going the coaching route or doing things like that because you've acquired the skill set. And what I find many times is that, um, especially when we're with tenure professionals um, like yourself and just in different spaces in general is that sometimes we don't 
always understand or value know like how much what we know can help others and so what i like is like individuals like yourself who take that additional step because it's not easy right to then transfer that knowledge to others it warns you twice right it's interesting until you do it you don't you don't even think about it but when you do it yeah it's cool and I want to I want to circle back. So for especially for, as you mentioned, maybe some of the newer listeners that weren't on board with Mission Matters um, on, for our prior interview. So I do want to spend a little bit of time before we go further into the book on um, on sales coaches corner for, again, people that didn't catch the first interview. Tell us a little bit more about the company. Sales Coaches Corner is a uh, sales training and coaching company based in, in Plymouth, Michigan, right between Ann Arbor and Detroit. And, and here's what we do. We teach a systematic approach to selling. It's a customized material, but but, but very systematic in, in its approach. I get to know the companies, get to have a real clear understanding of their product and their solution. And I, I teach a systematic way to approach sales, right? A lot of these folks, a lot of salespeople, and I'm not even talking new, fresh out of school, there's 20, 30 year salespeople out there that yeah. that know what they're doing and know their product, but but they can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. I teach a disciplined approach to not giving information away until it's time, a way to ask tough questions, mm-hmm. way to set expectations, way to qualify for for what we'll talk about later, the, the compelling problem or the pain that they have, mm-hmm. have the money conversation. And, and make sure you're talking to the right person. So it's a it's a systematic approach to selling that keeps you in control, at least as much control as you can be in in sales. A lot of times, salespeople feel like they're out of control, right? The sales the salesperson feels like, like the prospect or the customer has holds all the cards. Mm-hmm. It's their money. It's their right. They're they're in charge. Well, I give salespeople rights. Teach them it's at least we're at least half the equation. So let's let's be a partner in this thing and. Partnership selling requires you to ask questions and really understand what what the problem is and not just go out and do quotes and quotes and quotes for people that want them. That just turns into what we call quote and hope. Mm. Right? And that's not a strategy for selling. Yeah. And I, I think now it's time, a good time to do a transition. Let's get into the book. So a new way to do sales. Um, first off, what inspired this chapter? I love, love the title, first off, but what inspired this? Kind of what I just said, I'll I'll build on what I was talking about a few minutes ago. So many people, Mm. new and mature, do it the wrong way, Mm -hmm. right? They they think they're there to do what what some people call a needs analysis. Mm. So they'll ask a few questions up front to find out what the problem is. And they they do. Mm -hmm. But, But the first one or two things they hear... They think that's the need. That's the problem. I better start selling now. Yeah. And they fail to get deeper into it. They fail. So most often they're, they're giving information away, doing the solution almost on the spot, right? Yeah. In front of a prospect that's not qualified yet. Wow. Right? They're not. They've got a problem. They need a solution. There's two or three or four or five others in your area that will do it, they're probably going to meet with all of them. But salespeople fail to believe that. Salespeople think, oh, they called us. They invited us in. I should go in there and tell him everything I know so he likes me. And when he likes me, he'll definitely buy from me. Mm -hmm. Old school. Old school. New school selling requires you to really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you got to know that problem inside and out so that you can help like a doctor. So many doctors ask questions to keep themselves out of male practice court. They're doing the right thing. They're asking the right questions. Salespeople don't, we don't have male practice court. Mm -hmm. We can go out and do a half-ass job. Sorry. Half butt job (laughs) on an opportunity. Hope to get the business, chase these people all over town Mm -hmm. for an answer, never get an answer and call the prospect a big jerk. Yeah. Right. That's old school. That's just, this is, it doesn't work anymore. They're onto us. Let's put it that way. Prospects (laughs) are onto us, right? We got to change it up. So, so in the book, you talk about uh, this concept of, uh, of uh, setting ground rules and, uh, and let's dive into that. What does that mean for the, for the salespeople listening? 
ground rules are expectations mm. between salesperson and prospect mm. as to what will take place, mm-hmm. right? They're expectations. It's a it's a almost a flow chart for driving the conversation forward. Mm. And the key is to get to reality. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not looking to drive conversations forward if there's no problem, if there's no money, or if we're talking to the wrong person. So it's a concept of setting and managing expectations to get to reality so that we don't waste time. One of the best things I can teach my clients is is how to not be confused after an appointment. So often they think they had a good meeting. Mm-hmm. We ask what happened. They tell us what happened. And I'm waiting for the good stuff because mm-hmm. there ain't any good stuff. Right. Uh-huh. You had a meeting. You told them all you could do. Mm-hmm. Right. Did you find out really what his problem was? Did you find out who else he was looking at? Did you find yeah. out? How they made decisions at that company? Mm. You find out how? Do you find out how much that problem was costing them? Mm. Did you quantify the problem? Yeah. So many salespeople do a brutal job. Yeah. And and the best thing they can do at the beginning is learn how to manage expectations so that there's no what we call mystical mutual mystification at the end. Mentor in my business years ago taught me that mutual mystification. If two people are confused after a meeting, mm-hmm. what are the chances it's going to get bear any fruit? Yeah, yeah. Gotta, or be remembered, or be remembered. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so managing expectations is critical to the process, and yeah. it's it happens throughout the entire sale. It, it's mm-hmm. it's selling is nothing more than a a series of ground rules, every step of the way, little bits of managing expectations, mm-hmm. not big gigantic things, little things, little step. Who's calling who back? Now, I don't want to uh, I don't want to oversimplify this. You, you listed quite a few things, but I do want to move on to some other some other areas that you wrote about. But before we do that, um, let, let's let's elaborate maybe on one, on one of those questions that you that you mentioned pretty briefly um, and what that could look like in a salesperson's process just in general. And, and I'll, I'll just pick one randomly. So you mentioned something about um, how much is that problem costing them? Like, how could a salesperson bring that up? I'll give an example. In the book, I give an example of software. Often, and it's you, you have to know what your product can do. But, of course. but why do people change software? Mm-hmm. Companies don't do that just for sniffs and giggles. <laughs> it's a daunting task. Everybody's got to get on board. It's probably mm-hmm. expensive. It's got to be training coach. There's got to be a reason. Well, let's say, let's say, mm-hmm. the, to make it simple, let's say what we're using right now. The accounting software is 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 very time intensive. We have to duplicate efforts. We have to enter things. And then we have to enter things again. And we're not maximizing efficiencies. It's working, but it's taking 30 minutes to do that project. And we have a lot of 30-minute projects. Why are we doing this? Well, our product eliminates the duplicating of efforts. Mm. You can see when you use the product, right? So now if you help an, a customer or prospect understand how mm. much time or money is being wasted mm-hmm. by not having you in their life, you can quantify the problem. So, so if we can quantify the problem and realize that we're wasting yeah. $7,500 a month right. on duplicating efforts and time, man hours, now all of a sudden this I feel like that meeting's remembered, software. by the way. That's a memorable there meeting. There you go. It's valuable. You, you walk out of a meeting realizing you can save that money. All of a sudden, this software is paid off in three years Yeah, because we're not duplicating those efforts. That's mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. That's important. That's compelling. That shows that you get the prospect. When you, when you help them quantify their problem, all of a sudden, you're the solution provider. It's very interesting. If no one's ever done that before, no one's ever taken them to that ROI calculator to quantify the problem. When you do that, they, they it's very hard for them to look at you and say, well, we got to look at somebody else because mm-hmm. you just help them uncover it, right? You're the doctor mm-hmm. who goes to another doctor when you're helping them with the cure. I know there are second opinions. I get all that, mm-hmm. but, but well, your doctor knows what she's doing. Most people stay with the same doctor because they do it right. Mm-hmm. 
Preparing for the money conversation, I also thought this was a uh, 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 interesting um, angle and point, and and it's one that I I can think of times in my career when I was definitely guilty of not doing it uh, accurately or correctly, and maybe even skirting the skirting the question because it was uncomfortable, especially early on in my career. Um, now I now I love the money. I love preparing for the money conversation, and I mean ultimately, like if I'm if I want to add value, if I can add value to somebody. Um, and, and then I want to do everything I can to do that. So tell us a little bit more about your ideas on, on how to do that. Like, what does that mean? Here's what happens. Very often in sales, the quote comes over. Mm-hmm. The quote comes over and prospect opens it up. And if you're like most people, what page are you going to? Mm-hmm. How much is it going to cost You're going to the last page, bottom uh, line. Right? How much Everybody's is it going to cost looking for yeah. How much is it going to cost me? What I've learned is that so many people were surprised at that number. Mm -hmm. So many salespeople never prepared them for that number. Mm -hmm. And when, even if it's a low number, a great number, if it's not what you're expecting, now you flinch and say, what? Yeah. Uh, We got to look. And you mean, by the way, too low, too high, like either way, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. If it's too low, then it might not, they might not see the value. They might How how, how good can these guys be? Right. That's a very good point. Yeah. So, I learned, I learned it a long time ago, right? No money, no sale. Yeah. Right. There has to be the money, but, but that's only half of it. You have to understand how you're going to get it. Right. So, so there's two points. Is there money available? You have the question. If there is, how is it going to get to you? Like, what's the process that, right? So you, you've got to, you've got to make it, you've got to understand both. Is yeah. there money? How does it get to you? We, we've got to figure this out. So, it, 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 it's called the budget step, but so many of my clients f- were confused that, with that word, budget. Yeah. Budget is something that that a lot of these folks think is planned, prepared, mm-hmm. and, and and makes it to a capital equipment budget for the end for the year. Yeah. A lot of times, companies don't have budgets for your product or service. So so forget the word budget. Mm-hmm. I call it the money conversation. You still need to have the money conversation. Yeah. And it's 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 a it's an open-ended question. How much were you planning on spending for this? Yeah. If you're replacing something, mind sharing me with me how much you're currently spending. Last yeah. thing we want to do is go far out of the ballpark. Can yeah. you help me understand where you are now so that we can we can at least uh, f- find a solution that fits for you? Mm. Now if they're using something that doesn't work, I don't care how much money they're spending. <laughs> right. If it doesn't work. Who cares? So money conversation is important. Mm-hmm. So many, so many salespeople grew up in a household like mine mm-hmm. where we weren't allowed to talk about money. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and that worked. And I learned even yeah. now, even last Thanksgiving, I, for fun, I would say to my parents, I would say, okay, wait a minute. Who, who, who paid for Katie's wedding? How, did, did she pay or did the, the other family? And my dad yeah. shushes me. Shh, we don't talk about that. Wow. Even up until last year, right before yeah. he passed away. And mm. I would do that just to see the vein in his head burst. Mm. Right. And so I learned at a very young age, money is private. We don't talk about mm. that in this house. Oh, it stuck with me. Oh, so if you're a salesperson that grew up in a house like that, you got to get comfortable with money real quick. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting point. You're right. Like that. And it depends on not, you know, geography, cultures, a lot of different yeah. people from different yeah. places where some it's easier to talk about money and in the culture. And just in my household, it was the same way. Exactly what you said. So that money conversation, and that might have been one of the reasons why when I was younger, I did have a pretty hard time um, having the money um, conversation when I was in a sales role or something else, because I was kind of already ingrained to be like, ah, should I be saying this? Should I not be saying this? But ultimately, I mean, if you want to provide value, I mean, you got to have it. If there's not an exchange of money for your, your product and you're not helping someone, then how are you adding value to their life? Just period. Exactly. (laughs) It's a mindset. Yeah. So, um, speaking of, uh, the people that you care to help with, with your product, um, talking to the right people is another, uh, another piece that you wrote about here. And I'm like, oh, you're, when I, when I was going through some of the points you did and we were kind of going through the editing process and publishing this, I'm like, 
man, did Dave just like, who do you interview about my early career and all the things I did wrong? Like, I feel like many salespeople make these same mistakes. Like, tell me, tell me about what happens when you don't talk to the right people. <laughs> uh, well, f- f- first of all, if a sale gets made, it takes forever. If yeah. you're not talking to the right people, you can either count on no sale or the longest sales cycle of your career, which you don't need. Yeah. Here's another thing that might go back to childhood. I don't want to make this a whole Dr. Phil session, but but think about this. In addition to not being able to talk about money, mm. I was really there to be seen and not heard when company mm. came over. Yeah. Imagine the neighbors coming over to see your parents, not you. And every time they came over, and this is good rearing. This yeah. is great. My parents were, were spot on by doing this mm-hmm. because it wasn't for me. It was for them. But yeah. I learned my place. I yeah. learned my place. And I was obedient. And I did, followed the rules. Well, then I graduate college, get a briefcase, business card. And I got to talk to people with T-shirts older than me mm. about sales training. I couldn't. I mean, how am I going to do that? I'm not even allowed to talk to company. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you have to get comfortable with decision making people. And usually they're not the clerk that answers the phone that does all the work. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I use this fictitious Carl the clerk in my blogs and in a lot of my writings. Carl the clerk can't make a decision. Mm-hmm. Carl the clerk will talk to you, he'll go to lunch with you. Mm-hmm. He, he, he'll answer your phone calls yeah. and reply to your emails. Yeah. He just can't make a decision. So why are we talking to Carl the clerk? Because it's comfortable to talk to Carl mm-hmm. the clerk. And yeah. we, it's, it's easy and we think we're working, mm-hmm. but we're not moving sales forward. Mm-hmm. So there comes a time when we have to ask Carl, how does it work at mm-hmm. your place when it comes to decisions like this? Who's involved? I know Mm -hmm. you're a big part of it, Carl. Can you help me understand the process? And then shut up and listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you. Yeah, there's a guy named Adam. I got to run everything through Adam. But spending two months with Carl, and (laughs) Adam's the guy. Now, I don't go over Carl's head. I say, okay, Adam or Carl, how do we do this? I know this is is something important to you. So what's the best way to get the three of us together? Well, how about we do the next Zoom? How about we do our next Zoom appointment and we include Adam? Yeah. Right? You just learned about Adam. You got to get to Adam. Right? Don't don't just think that Carl can sell for you. Nobody can sell your product for you Mm -hmm. to the ultimate decision maker better than you. Mm -hmm. Right? So so fight to get to that decision maker. And it's not an abrasive, offensive suggestion that you go mm-hmm. over Carl's head at all. You don't. You make Carl a part of it, and you have Carl take you to Adam. Mm. Right? It's very important. You want to yeah. close deals? Get to the appropriate people that can make a yes decision early. Right? Carl yeah. can't make a yes decision. He can yeah. he can say no, yeah. but he can't say yes. Why are we talking yeah. to Carl? Yeah. You're you're teaching a master class today, Dave. I knew you would. You would not disappoint, um, and, and you're not. Uh, so let, moving on, um, follow the numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. For business owners out there, you might get this. You might not. And for salespeople out there, you better get this one if you want to have a long uh, a, a long sales career. That is. So um, how important are fo- is following the numbers? Here's here's the story with that. I'll I'll, I'll start off with a strong contention that you have to know Mm. why you get the business when you get the business. Mm. You have to know the reason you make the sale. Mm. Equally as important is to understand why you didn't make the sale when you don't make sales. Two critical things. And in order to do that, unless you're a mind reader and a (laughs) savant, you have to track your success. You have to track your numbers. Right. The only way, imagine you're building, I'm working with a company right now on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. We're tracking activity right now, mm-hmm. conversations that result to quotes, that result to sales. Mm-hmm. He's building the playbook that he will start to manage when he hires out the new people next year. Mm-hmm. It's, it, what, what we're doing right now, as daunting as it is, helps is going to help this fellow when he hires new people. He'll have mm-hmm. it already. We'll know. It's going to take 
five stops at those construction sites to talk to two people, to talk to the end up wanting one quote for their product. When the new person starts, okay, you want to go, you want to, here's how much money you want to make. All right. Yep. Can you stop and see five people a day? Yeah. Okay. Remember now they're not, they're not always going to be there. Yeah. What we found is that two out of five are actually there. Mm. And, and when we meet with those two people, at least one of them wants a quote. Mm. They sell uh, fuel, diesel fuel. If you'll go see five, you'll end up doing one quote. Yeah. That's only because we track those numbers. The, the only way to know that is because it is tracked, documented, and studied. We go over it every week. Now, the first two, three, four, five weeks, there's not enough data. Mm-mm. Right? It looks it looks like he's doing a great job. Maybe yeah. it looks like he's not doing anything, but there's still not enough data. You you get two months of data, three months of data behind you, you can say, okay, now I know what we have to do. Mm-hmm. Right? We have to send out this many emails. We have to make this many calls. We have to stop in this many places to put mm-hmm. ourselves in a position to succeed. Mm-hmm. Right? Every hockey team and basketball team and baseball team and football team. Every single one of those has multiple people on their staff tracking statistics, mm-hmm. right? I promise you, I promise you, when the Red Wings put five guys out on the power play, yeah, it's by design because they have a 26.2% chance of putting the puck in the net because they've done it all year, yeah. right? Same thing with the power play. Probably a different group of guys. They keep the puck out of the net, or the penalty kill, rather. They keep the puck out of the net 78.9% of the time. Right, mm. there's no way to know that unless you track it. You have to track that stuff. Otherwise, we think we know how good we are, but we don't. We really don't. That's one how important thing, the numbers are. And one of the things that I like about the idea of tracking is if you can get over that that hurdle or that hump or whatever you call it in the beginning when it's kind of messy. Like over time, like the numbers maybe they begin to normalize, or maybe it, every time I've gone into this tracking exercise, like I, I learn new things. Whether it's about the business, whether it's about the sales process, something else. But over time, like if you have that data, then you that that's power, right? Like you're able to make decisions based off that, right? That's it. That's right. And now, now you can do things that are duplicatable, yeah. because that's how it worked that time and that time mm-hmm. and that time. And when the new group players on. That's, there's a playbook of success. Mm-hmm. Here's your onboarding. Yeah. What do I have to do? Well, I'll tell you exactly what you have to do. You're going to find this interesting, but mm-hmm. I didn't have this when we started. But thank God we have it now. It's really interesting, right? And yeah. it's is it's not fun. It's not fun. Most people don't want to do it. They don't yeah. want. Why? Why would I do that? Well, only because you want to be successful. Mm-hmm. That's all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Dave, um, you, like I said, you, you did not disappoint. You never do. And it has been awesome having you on the show um, and, and, and promoting this book with you as well. Um, also, we got We got to work the podcast in here a little bit, too. Don't forget that. Like, tell us a little bit more. Come on. <laughs> well, here's here's what we're, we're starting to do. I'm, I'm going to have um, probably start off with a couple of months and eventually weekly mm-hmm. podcasts. And I'm going to start yeah. with clients. I'm going to start with with sales leaders, yeah. owners of companies, perhaps high level salespeople, and yeah. people that are just like you, mm-hmm. folks that are out there listening, to to really learn what some of their challenges are. Yeah. Here's what's neat about learning, and especially in the sales training and coaching business, mm-hmm. you put enough people in a room or on a podcast that mm-hmm. have certain issues and now all of a sudden you don't feel like you're the only one <laughs> right when when adam Sales said oh my, oh my right yeah when when adam said oh my god i can't believe you dave you must have been reading into my past mm. right adam you are not the only person that struggled to get in front of decision makers mm-hmm. you are not there's value in knowing there's other people like you you're not alone and there's a lot of value mm-hmm. in discussing it learning the right way and getting some best practices out of the way. So there will be times when I give some suggestions that will help. There'll also be some times when the person I'm interviewing has some great best practices that they can share and they're in it. They are Mm. in the moment on the Mm. street, shoot with real bullets, right? 
I'm on the street shooting with real bullets, but I look like a sales trainer or a coach most of the time. <laughs> so who's going to listen to me? You're going to you want to listen to the guy that's really out there doing it. Yeah. So there's a lot of value in that. It, it's mm -hmm. Adam just said support group. It's it, it, it's part of it is that, but it, it's also I'm not alone. Right? I'm not the only one. I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one that couldn't understand the budget conversation. Well, yeah. no, no, a lot of people can't do that. It's so awesome. we'll have we'll we'll have some fun and we'll have a lot of learning. It's great. Well, Dave, um, again, great having you back on the show. Um, I learned a lot. I'm sure our audience learned a lot as well. Uh, if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more about Sales Coaches Corner and to just continue to follow your journey and your content, I mean, what's the best way for people to do that? Three things. Number one, the website, Sales Coaches Corner. Mm -hmm. There's an information page. Click on that. Yeah. Write as much as you want. I promise. Chubby guy from Michigan named Dave Tier will get back <laughs> to you. Right? Probably yeah. within an hour. Right? Unless yeah. I'm busy training or coaching. Right? Yeah. Got to be quick on that follow-up. So yeah. Sales Coaches Corner information page. Sign up for the blog while you're at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Comes out every other week. Dave at Sales Coaches Corner is my email. If you want to just go right to my inbox, Dave at Sales Coaches Corner. I'll be happy to call you back, email you back. We'll pick a time to talk, mm -hmm. see what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right. It's easy to find me, salescoachescorner.com. And we'll put all that information in the show notes so that uh, so that our audience can just click on the links and uh, head right on over and check out your your website and also um, and connect with you. Yeah. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or listening to an episode or engaging with the content, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, their profession, their background story, and really what we can all learn and gain from that so we can all grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Dave, really always a pleasure working with you. Thanks again for coming back on the show. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate you. Way to go.